So a couple days ago, I was walking down the bike path that we have in my part of New York. We've got this gorgeous bike path that runs uh, across the entire state. I've got one that heads north, one that heads east-west, and uh, just a beautiful network of, uh, of these trails that go off into the woods. There used to be the old railroads that they've converted to uh, public trails for cycling, running, and just enjoyment out in nature. One uh, afternoon last week, I was uh, going on one of my walks, and I happened to uh, be really enjoying the fact that there was nobody out there. Usually they can be pretty crowded, especially during the pandemic and people wanting to get outside. A lot of people are out there, which is a great thing. This one particular day, there was nobody out there. It was just uh, myself and the wilderness, and it was beautiful. As I was walking, I came across uh, some people coming towards me, and as I got closer, I noticed that it was a couple, and as I got closer, I was able to see uh, that they were on in their years, maybe mid-70s, uh, you know, late 60s, and it was a couple, they were holding hands, husband and wife, possibly, uh, and they were just enjoying the day, brisk winter day, the sun was out, it was just gorgeous. And as I got closer, I noticed the gentleman uh, who was on the lady's uh, left side, and she was on his right, in his left hand, he was holding something. And as I got closer and was getting ready to uh, say good afternoon, I noticed that he was carrying a baseball bat in his left hand. And as I got closer, I even noticed it was legitimately a Louisville Slugger. It had, had the brand on it and everything. It was a purple baseball bat. And he was carrying it right at the handle uh, and in what appeared to be him trying to show a presence of, uh, not, not like he's intimidating, but I'm not gonna get messed with. Now, I'm not gonna stand in anybody else's shoes and uh, try to make sense of what they're doing and why they're doing it. But as I said good afternoon, and they kindly said good afternoon back to me, and we went our opposite directions, I got to thinking about that. And I got to thinking what would cause someone to go on a beautiful walk with their wife, enjoying nature, enjoying his beautiful day, and feel that level of threat. And as I continue to reflect on this, again, maybe he got bit, uh, by an off-leash dog on the bike path. Uh, maybe he was assaulted, maybe his wife was victimized at some point, and he just wanted to demonstrate uh, a wall of protection or security. You know, as I got to reflect even deeper on this, I thought about myself, and I thought about where will I be in those years where my body may not be uh, have the physicality uh, to d call upon the skill set that I have as a lifelong martial artist to be able to defend myself or my wife or loved one when I'm out in the woods and nobody else is there. The answer came to me, and that's really what I wanna share with you today, and I want you to consider uh, this perspective. To not enter your golden years and move on into life uh, with a feeling of being intimidated by your body aging or getting older, but instead become empowered by that. You see, in my dojo, in my martial arts school, we have a huge system of stick fighting, from six foot staffs, to small sticks, to even handheld sticks. They were used throughout history in a lot of different ways. The samurai would use them as spears, as halberds. They'd use them to take down cavalry from horses. They would use the priests, the, the uh, Shinto priests would use them in rituals. Uh, but then the Yamabushi or the mountain monks would use them as walking sticks, but they'd also be very proficient in using them as weaponry. As well as in uh, the European tradition, there's Welsh polearm fighting. The Spaniards have their own style of, of stick fighting. When we go back to looking at this and looking at where the outcome of this constant training is and what the masters have taught us, this type of training allows us to become upright model people and develop a higher sense of consciousness. And I know that this sounds ethereal. I get it. I understand that a stick is a great weapon because every closet has a broom in it and you can just grab the broom and if you're proficient in stick fighting, then you can use a broom just like any stick that you have in a martial arts school that's a very shallow way of looking at your progress in your training. Whether it's MMA, whether it's Judo, whether it's Tai Chi Chuan, whether it's whatever the craft or skill that you're having, if you are training, you are elevating your consciousness. And when you get to those years, and when you get to those moments within those years where you should be enjoying the beauty uh, of, of the time, whether it be with someone you love or whether you're just looking out at all that you've produced, you don't live in a state of fear where you have to carry a baseball bat on every beautiful day. Instead, you're confident in knowing that the constant and rigorous training that you've applied throughout your life will naturally be called on should that situation happen. It'll naturally come forward 
in however, in whatever adaptive way is necessary. This is what I think the masters mean by having a heightened level of consciousness. Whether you'd be able to de-escalate that situation verbally, whether if it's a dog, you become so comfortable with communicating through your body language and through your energy to animals so that you're able to maybe in your later years and through your training, de-escalate the senses of an angry animal. You know, you have from St. Francis of Assisi to some of these Buddhist masters who would have birds land on their shoulder. I mean, we've all heard these stories. There's some truth to that though. And that truth is found in your discipline and your commitment to training and staying on that path. When we talk about stick fighting in the martial arts, a stick is a straight weapon. And even though us as, as men by nature, we're bent, we're broken, we're hurt, we're struggling, uh, maybe our physicality has gotten weak, maybe our mental health and our mental fitness and our emotional uh, fortitude has gotten weaker over the years. By staying in our training, and in this case, continuing with training with the stick, it continues to keep our energy in alignment. A stick, and, and stick fighting and using a staff or a, like the Filipino fighters, they'll tell you that there is absolute honesty found in that type of training. And just like many other disciplines, not, not necessarily even in uh, in martial arts, but in, uh, for example, brush calligraphy in what I study, uh, in different, uh, different arts, uh, different movement arts, whatever the discipline might be. Uh, in this case, the stick, it is very honest and it won't lie and it won't give you an opportunity for error. There's very little margin of error. And the more you pursue efficiency of mind, efficiency of movement, then your outcomes will become greater and greater and greater. You'll be able to expand more as you become more efficient. It creates more space. It allows you to think more clearly and respond more directly and more appropriately to those situations. I invite you, as you move towards your golden years, as you get older as a man, that you consider the depth and the commitment of your training to not cease, but to have your perspective change a little bit. Have your perspective change towards elevating your consciousness, elevating who you are emotionally and mentally, and knowing that should that situation ever happen where you might need a baseball bat, that you have the training that you will naturally fall back on, whether it be physical, whether it be mental or emotional, however that response will be, it will be suitable for the time. Trust in yourself, trust in your skill set, trust in your experience and your knowledge and who you are as a man. If you enjoyed this and got some value from it, helped you to think a little bit differently, maybe give you a different optic on stuff you already know. And if you're a dad who's interested in taking on and continuing the role of a guide and guardian in their household with their children, teaching your children the basic things like survival, self-reliance, resiliency, and confidence, then I invite you to check out the work that I do with other men over at Close Quarter Dad. Once again, I want to thank you for spending your time with me today, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. <laughs> Thank uh you. -huh.